and the time clock is still ticking. For the very latest, I'm going to take you to Capitol Hill, where Chief Washington Correspondent Peter Cook is standing by with Republican Senator Bob Corker. Peter? Margaret, thanks very much. Senator Corker of Tennessee, he's not on the Super Committee, but he's been a major player in this budget battle so far. Give me your take on where things stand. Are we headed for a stalemate? Are we headed for failure? You know, we're not quite to the deadline, and I think you know that uh, usually uh, things don't happen until they have to happen. I, I still think we're going to end up with a deal, and, and uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with what... Uh, you know, our, our three Republican senators have been doing. I, I think they've shown some flexibility towards wanting to make a deal, and I ultimately think we will. The so. flexibility that offer coming from the Republican senators included for the first time tax revenue on the table as much as $300 billion. First of all, do you support that latest offer from Republicans, and would you be willing to support going beyond that if that's what it takes to get a deal? Well, I think all of us want to see the whole package, but I think it's really significant that Pat Toomey, who was president of Club for Growth and, you know, has a trademark of being someone who's a staunch conservative and very opposed to tax increases, uh, you know, led this effort. And uh, so, I, again, I think all of us want to see what's going to happen on the other side of the equation. And I, I think all Americans want to know that if there's going to be revenues that are added to this, that are real, that are statically scored, that we've actually done something to reduce liabilities in a real way, especially on Medicare. So, again, I think all of us want to see the whole package. My guess is with the, with the people that we have here, six and six, it's probably going to be balanced. And, uh, again, I think I'm, ho I'm very hopeful still that we're going to end up with something that's great for our country. Hopeful, but let me talk to you about the reality. If they yeah. don't reach a deal, there are already some uh, members of Congress talking about trying to undo the automatic cuts, particularly on the defense side, if the super committee can't reach an agreement. Is that yeah. something you'd be willing to support? And what are the chances that's going to happen? Well, I, I, you know, the, the fact is they just need to come to, an ideal, to a deal. I don't think there's any question that a sequester that's going to take place in January of 2013 uh, has, has, you know, a chance of not actually occurring. So, look, as we watch, as you and I were talking before we came on, as we watch what's happening in Europe right now, um, we understand that these countries did not do the things they needed to do in advance. We can actually see our future playing out if we don't deal with this appropriately. I'm still on the, on the page, Peter, that a deal is going to happen. Uh, I think that's the very best thing that can happen for this country as it relates to employment. I mean, that's what people want to see is that we have the ability, the courage, the will to deal with the structural issues that we have as a country. And I think if we can do that, that is the very best thing we can do for job creation. Punning to a sequestration that's going to take place in January, to me, uh, just continues this, this malaise that we have now of our country. So we, we need to do this. It has to be done. That's our responsibility. Uh, with six Republicans and six Democrats, if we cannot do it now, it'll never be done. It has to be something that we can accomplish. Real quick, I know you introduced yesterday legislation caught a lot of people's attention, winding down Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. You're talking about starting a conversation. You don't realistically think this is something that can happen in the short term? I don't think it's going to happen in the short term, but I think it's a marker that shows in a responsible way how we can wind these organizations down. And it really gets the, it has provisions to get the private sector back into housing finance. So I think it's very thoughtful. Uh, everybody, you know, it's, a, it's amazing, Peter. I mean, you end up having industries built around government programs here, and they're very difficult to unwind. People on both sides of the aisle, I hate to say it, and this is something that we can, we can do. I mean, it's easily done, and we've tried to lay a marker as to how that can happen. So uh, I, I think it's a, a very thoughtful bill. I'm proud of it. It's only 30 pages, but it deals with some complex issues, and hopefully it'll be the route we take. Bob Corker, appreciate it as always for joining us here on Bloomberg Television. The Super Committee to Talks continue, Margaret. We'll be on it from here on the Hill all day. Thank you very much, Peter. And our coverage continues. Uh, we've been covering this in depth all week. Uh, the deficit debate today, we're going to talk to former U.S. controller David Walker. He'll be our guest here on In Business.